Hello everyone and welcome back to Game on Caffeine. My name is Isaac and we're back playing the Reckoning mod pack for episode 2. And I've changed texture pack because I put a link in the description to a straw poll uh, in the last episode asking me which texture pack you guys wanted to see. And at the moment, Sfax is just, just winning. It's like 51 votes to 48. It was a really tough call. But uh, I thought I'd give you an episode showing you what it looks like with Sfax. It also looks really nice. I do still have the shaders installed as uh, so you can see that as well. The leaves are just still wobbling a little bit. And uh, I've been mining since last, since last episode. Oh my god, look at the torches. Look at the torches. Yeah, I've been mining since last episode. I've got a bunch of stuff, mainly iron. I got a ton of iron, uh, a lot of tin, a bit of, <laughs> a little bit of copper. I got 21, uh, some gold and some other stuff. And what I want to do today is I want to get started on some thumb crafty stuff. And in order to do that, I am going to need a thermometer. Now, the thermometer basically lets us not starve, no. The thermometer basically lets us uh, scan items in the world and unlock re uh, unlock aspects that we can then use to do some Thorncraft research. So, in order to make the Thermonomicon, I am going to need some sand. So, I am going to venture out into the darkness during the night and uh, <laughs> try and get some sand from this nearby riverbank. So, hopefully, we don't run into too many mobs. And if we do, we can hopefully take care of them easily. Oh, I can hear them shooting at me. Stop. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. Oh god, there we go. Okay, <laughs> as soon as we get some sand, we can just teleport back home. But until then, uh, we can't. Like, here we go. We only need one piece for now. That's fine. Home sweet home. Gotta love it. Right, okay, that's fine. Whew, right, so. Uh, if we click on some sand, we'll get a piece of glass. And the thermometer is made with two shards, two uh, gold, and one piece of glass. I, uh, I spelled up some gold before the episode started. Uh, in terms of shards, we did have some. I was sure we had some. Oh yeah, here we go. We have some order shards. For some reason, I didn't find any other shards. We got order shards. That's it. But uh, here we go. Gold ingots, order shards, and glass gets us a thermometer. Nice. So now we can go around. We can scan stuff. Now I have with me a little cheat sheet, uh, as I do with Thorncraft. That uh, look at this. The shaders don't really work when you go over this, does it? Um, <laughs> I have a little cheat sheet with me. Uh, I have two actually. I put links to both of them in the description because although I really like Thorncraft as a mod, I'm not a huge fan of the early game where you've got to go around and like scan a bunch of stuff and try and unlock all the aspects. It, it takes a while and I, it's a bit tedious. So I use these cheat sheets. One of them, it tells me what aspects make up what other aspects. So for instance, I could tell you that Lux is made up of Air and Ignis and uh, Vacuous is made up of Air and Predator. Uh, I've got a big sheet here, it just la lays them all out, it makes research uh, a lot easier and stuff like that. And the other cheat sheet I have is called uh, Thorncraft 4, a quick way to discover all aspects. And it basically lists the order in which you should start scanning items uh, in order to unlock all the aspects. Because if I scan, for instance, a crafting table, uh, you've got to hold shift to scan anything that you has an interface. You'll see just behind the bottom right there, it says, uh, to understand this, you need to study more. So in order to do that, we need more aspects. We need the, we need the aspects uh, for the crafting table. So the, there are six primal aspects, as uh, those who are familiar with Thorncraft might know. There are Air, Aqua, Ignis, Ordo, and Predito and Terra. And those six make up a bunch more aspects. So like Terra and Predito might make something. And do they? No, they don't. <laughs> okay, so for instance, like I said before, Air and Ignis makes Lux. And then Lux is used in torches. So if we scan a torch, which is actually the first item on the list, we get Lux because we know both Air and Ignis, so then we can unlock Lux. And now, if there was something that used Lux and something else, for instance, I can see here that Lux and Vacuous makes uh, some weird aspect that I can't pronounce. <laughs> Once we... Oh, God. Oh, my... No! No! Why? Hopefully, we didn't lose our flip... Oh, my... Look at this! What the heck? Hopefully, we didn't lose our... Um... Oh, here it is. Look, that looks cool when it's on the floor. No, no. I'm done. I'm done with dying. I don't want to die again. Oh, God. Oh, God. We've been attacked on all sides. We've got a sword. It's fine. Jesus. I apologize. It's very dark. Die, 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 die. We're being attacked. I'm going to find my way into the light. There were a lot of pigs about. And mobs. And mob-like pigs. I don't like it. It's very dark. Okay, I think I'm well hidden. Actually, I have no idea. I doubt I'm very well hidden at all. Oh, God. Creeper. Oh, my God. That creeper's got like a billion health. What the? That looked cool. I'm not going to lie. That looked pretty cool. Let's throw this on. Okay, so we've got our thermometer back. That's fine. The next thing we need to research is cobblestone. We can scan some cobblestone. Let's find some. Uh, is there somewhere around here where we just blew stuff up? There is. Okay. Let's scan this. There we go. We've unlocked some terror. And I think Saxon as well. Uh, quite possibly. It says it says stone and cobblestone, so I'll mine this. You can also mine you can also scan stuff just by throwing it on the floor. So if you just throw something on the floor and then scan it. 
thing. So there we go, we just unlocked Saxum. Uh, next thing is Call, and basically you've got to just do this, rinse and repeat forever and ever until you unlock all the aspects. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away real quick, try and survive the night, and rebuild my house and do a bunch of scanning. And I'll be back in a second once I have scanned a bunch more items. Okay, so a little while and a couple of deaths later and we're back and I've unlocked quite a few uh, quite a few aspects. If we look in the aspects of magic section again, we'll see we have Lux, we have um, Potentia, Vacuous and those are actually the only ones we have because the next thing on my list of quick ways to discover all the aspects is we have to do some research and in order to do that, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need uh, a research table and some scribing tools. Like you can see here, it says research. Um, you can read all this if you want, it's in the Thermonomicon, it's pretty good, but it takes a while, so I'm not going to read it on camera. We need this thing to discover stuff, and then we need a workbench, so we need some scribing tools. And it didn't tell you right there, but we do also need some tables. So, let's grab some wood. I think we're going to need a little bit more. Take that as well. We're going to first of all need some slabs, like this. And then if you just type in table into NEI, you'll come up with this thing, shift left click, and you get a table. Nice. So we're going to need two of these, actually, in order to make what we're after. So let's go again, table. And once you put two of these down next to each other, what you can do is you can put a scribing tools on them, and it will turn into a research table. And scribing tools are fairly easy. Scribing, it helps if you can spell. Scribing tools are a feather, an ink sack, and a glass bottle. Luckily enough, I have some glass. I have a feather, and I have... Uh, some ink. Look at that. I don't know if this is shapeless or not. Is it shapeless? It is. Okay, so you can put these anywhere in the crafting table. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We only need one for now, so we'll take one. We'll keep hold of the rest. And let's throw that in there. Boom. And now we have ourselves a research table. And you can see it has all of the aspects that we have. Now, it's useful to scan things that you already know the aspects of because it gets you extra points in here. These are research points. Uh, and these can be used to unlock new aspects, to unlock research, which we will come to in a minute up here. And a bunch of other stuff. So even if you scan something and it's already got aspects that you have, like a furnace, we probably already have uh, Terra, Predito, Saxum, Ignis, whatever it was that just went all the way up there. We have all of that stuff, but it was useful because it means now we've got extra points in here. You can see we have extra Ignis and uh, like an extra Predito as well, which is kind of nice, an extra Terra, but we don't have extra air or water. So the next thing on my list is to uh, unlock Victus, which is uh, water and air. Gets you uh, Tempen? What? Oh, Aqua plus Terra. Sorry, I'm doing the wrong one. There we go. There we get Victus. Okay. So you can see, if you don't really want to go about and have to scan everything, you can kind of just stand here and uh, put stuff together, put one and two together until you get three, I guess, <laughs> until you get what you're after. So if I mix, like, I don't know, air. Let me see. What do we... Yeah, if I mixed uh, air and Predator together, we'd get Vacuous again. So I'm not going to do that. If I mixed Earth and... Uh, okay, let's say I mixed Terra and Victus. I should get Granum. There we go. I unlocked something. What did I unlock? Terra plus Victus. It should have been Granum. But it wasn't, so I'm not quite sure what I unlocked there. But okay, I'm not going to complain. I think we unlocked... Oh, we unlocked Herba. Okay, maybe Granum's been taken out then. Because it shows Granum on this list, but it's jumped straight to Herba. Apparently, according to this, Granum plus uh, Terra makes Herba. Maybe Herba's just been taken out. So, according to this, Herba plus... Uh, Terra should make us the tree one, and it doesn't, so I have no idea what we're doing here, but let's scan a tree and see if we can get the tree one we're after. We did, okay. So apparently we had everything we needed for this, but uh, it just didn't want to give it to us. So now we can run around, and what you can, what's a good idea, what I like to do is usually sit here for a bit, try and put together uh, all of the aspects that I can put together, and then after you've done that, or after you, as soon as you've run out of uh, aspects, what you can do is you can start running around, and you'll find that you can scan a lot more stuff than you could originally, which is quite nice because it means that you're not just like, when you start off, you, you, do, a, you do a lot of walking around not finding anything so this is rubber wood so yeah uh, we can scan some of this this is gonna be useful actually uh rubber wood from ic2 that's a nice thing to have close by uh so yeah when you run around initially you're gonna find you can't scan a lot especially if you don't start with the list and scan like torches cobblestone coal uh, and that lot first you're gonna you could you can get really frustrated and uh, and that's what i definitely did first time i started with thorncraft i was like forget this it takes too long it's boring i'm not, I'm not doing it but uh, it is quite a fun mod, so don't give up on it too soon. So once we've got that done, actually, once before I move on with Thorncraft, what I want to do real quick is I want to set up um, a hopper because I want to get all these Oz protest, and I don't want to stand here and just faff about with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an axe. I'm going to get some more wood so we have enough wood to make a chest. And I'm going to make a hopper system that allows us to, um, to insta-cook our Oz. So let's just go and take this tree. 
Although I do like our trees. I do. I think we do have tree capitator on, by the way. I was. I think I was wrong uh, last episode when I said we didn't. Uh, I thought I could click on these and have a look, but apparently not. Uh, yeah, I think we do have tree capitator on this pack, which is quite nice, actually. Uh, oh, also, what we also have is a mod called Vein Miner. Actually, that might be it. I'm not sure. There is a mod called Vein Miner, which does mean that if I hold shift and destroy stuff... Uh, did it not work? Let me try Let me try doing it in the cobblestone. Um, vein miner is installed, which means if I hold shift, I think it is, and break this. Let me have a look at the controls. It might have been assigned. Oh, my God. What the heck? Equivalent exchange three. Okay, so they've changed this up a little bit. Uh, vein miner. Okay, so it's the grave key, which I think is this one. There we go. Okay, that's how it does it. Okay, so if you hold the grave key, which is the one below the escape key uh, on a US layout keyboard, uh, above the tab below the escape, uh, I think it's in the same place on a UK keyboard as well. Uh, so you just want to hold that down, right click, and it'll destroy a bunch of stuff. Do bear in mind, it will use your, it, it'll act on, upon your pick like you've just like taken out this much cobblestone. It's really nice for mining early on because, it, well, not necessarily early on, but it's really nice for mining because it means you can sort of like clear out large areas of cobblestone and see the all that you're after pretty uh, pretty quickly and efficiently. But you just saw then it took with it got rid of an iron pickaxe like in no time at all. So just just be wary of that. And if you used like a a wooden pick, it would just destroy it, I believe. Yeah, it kind of just, it's just gone, just done. Uh, so that does work on all sorts of stuff. I could do it on, if I held down the grave key over here. So I don't kind of don't want to make too much of a mess of the landscape, but there's already a mess here. So I hold down the grave key, break some grass, boom, gets rid of a bunch of grass. So it's a kind of cool little feature, cool little mod, and we've crashed. <laughs> Okay, and I'm back. Right, so now we've got ourselves enough wood. What we can do is we can make a chest, and what my plan is, is to use a hopper to then uh, automatically put stuff into the furnace and then automatically pull stuff out of the furnace and hopefully into a different chest. So let's see if I can get this to work. So I'm gonna need, uh, I think, three chests like this. Uh, let's see, three, oh, nope, that didn't work. Three chests, one of which will be used to make a hopper. I don't think the recipe for hoppers changed uh, to 1.7.2, so we'll have a look. Did that change? Nope, exactly the same. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this furnace. We're going to pick it up with our non-existent pickaxe that we don't have because we just flipping wasted them all showing off vein miner. We're going to make a new pick. Let's grab this guy. Not quite sure what that coloring is about, but okay. Let's throw you down, say, here. We'll have a hopper and a chest. Like that. And then we'll just put everything, all the ores that we want smelting. Oh my god, that creeper. Jesus. And I just like spammed all my keys. Oh my. Whew, I thought it was a normal creeper then. It just like managed to jump really high somehow. <sighs> that scared me. Okay, let's grab all this stuff. And uh, let's throw them in here. So I'm going to move iron to the front because we need quite a bit of iron. And then it should just put them straight into the furnace, which it did. Nice. And then we're going to put a coal in there. We do kind of have to make sure that there's always coal in here, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. And then what we can do is I... Th oh. Hmm. What we could do is... I don't know. We could use... Do we have, we have Billcraft, don't we? So let's get, let's get some pipes. I haven't used pipes in a while. Let's get some, uh, some cobblestone transport pipes, which are just... I think we have a one, one spare piece of glass, don't we? Nice. So we'll grab some cobblestone transport pipes. Uh, probably didn't really need that many. Probably didn't really need any, to be honest, because we should have just used glass. But, hey, what are you going to do? Let's go grab one more piece of sand and, and make a wooden transport pipe and then a, um, a wooden pump. Not a wooden pump. A redstone engine is what we're going to get. And then we're going to start pumping stuff out. Okay. We really need to get a decent source of food going because I'm dying of hunger far too often. And we also need a bed. Where are the sheep at? I've seen like a ton of cows, uh, a ton of pigs, and I cannot see any sheep on the map whatsoever. Uh, this is quite a nice like way to, to look around in the night because it's it sort of lights everything up. I quite like it. Let's grab some sand. Actually, what we could do is just hold the grave key. Boom. Look at that. That I love that. Look at all that sand. Oh, it kind of, we could see through water as well. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay, let's head back home. Home sweet home. Look how fast we managed to get a stack and a half of, uh, of sand. That's pretty cool. That is uh, pretty flipping cool. We should probably put a roof on this place because it's scary. Spiders can get in. Uh, I don't know where that creeper came from, actually, though, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. But uh, what we can do is let's grab some wood. Let's make a wooden transport pipe because, for those who don't know, you need a wooden transport pipe to uh, to pull stuff out of... Oh, come on, what glass? Uh, you need a wooden transport pipe to pull things out of a, an inventory. Uh, cobblestone pipes can't do that. So we'll get a piece of glass. And we'll make ourselves a wooden transport pipe. So I'll leave the glass going because I think we need uh, some more glass for the redstone engine. Let's put you there. And then we're going to want to get a redstone engine, which is not too hard to make. 
It is uh, a piston, some uh, wooden gears, some glass, and some more wood. We do happen to have everything we need for a piston because we have iron and redstone. So, let's make a piston. Gears are really easy to make. It's just sticks. So, we can make some of those. We got an achievement for making sticks <laughs> a bit rough around the edges that they are. Let's grab that. And I think we should be about good to go. Grab some glass and boom. Nice. Okay. Then we're also going to need a lever to turn the redstone engine on and off. And then we should be able to, uh, to get things going. So I'm going to put this in the ground. I think what I can do this maybe. If I put that there, turn it on, and then put the redstone engine down, does that work? It does. Nice. So we can have that. We can have a chest. And that should start to pump stuff out. Nice. Look at Oh, it's pumping out coal. No, that's not what I want. No, no, I don't want you to pump out coal. Um, hmm. I don't want you to pump out coal. How can I have you? Hmm, that's annoying. Um, okay, let me try something else. If I was to use this hopper at the bottom, would that work? For some reason, I have a feeling that putting a hopper on like this is only going to pull out the stuff that I want. And it is. Okay, so that... Okay, okay. Okay, that works. Right, let's get rid of all this stuff. Let's pick everything up and let's rearrange this a little bit. So now we're going to repurpose our pump. Uh, our pipe and our pump are going to be used to pump stuff in. To, is this a pickaxe thing? Nope, this just takes a really long time to break. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to use our pump and our wooden pipe to take stuff out of this chest into the, uh, into the iron furnace, which I think I'm going to put... Let me get that torch back. Which I think I'm going to put here... So we'll have a wooden pipe going from there to there. And oh, we need to turn that around. I don't want you on there. I want you on the other way around. We can fix that in a second. So obviously we're going from there to there. So let's get our pump. Throw it on the wall here. I know this looks a bit messy and we've kind of deviated away from Thorncraft a little bit. But I kind of want to get these ores processing so we don't have to like spend time cooking stuff up. And then we'll have a hopper going into there. And I think that should work. If I put stuff in there, does it go into the chest? It does, cool. Okay, so let's get a wrench. Uh, how hard's a wrench? Three iron. Oh, we've got two iron. What is that about? Why is that about? We're going to have to cook up a piece of iron. It's no big deal. Uh, throw you in there. Throw all of you in there. That should be fine. That should go straight into the chest. While we're waiting for that to do its thing, let's get uh, another set of gears, which, again, not too hard to get. Turn them from wooden to stone. You just need to put the wooden gear in the middle and surround it by cobblestone, like that. Two stone gears, and then a, hard as a rock. <laughs> and then we need three pieces of iron. So I'll take you, and wrench. Nice. And then we can wrench this round. There we go. We can throw all of the ores back into here. We can flick that lever on, and stuff should start to work. Now, I have my doubts, because I have a feeling now that it's going to... Uh... Hmm... Okay, okay. All right. Yep, this isn't going to work. <laughs> because the, 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 the downside with buildcraft pipes is they're not very smart. They just do what you tell them to do, um, which may sound like a silly answer. But the, the thing is, they're automatically going to just push stuff into there. And then if there's no space in there, it's just going to be like, ah, well, tough luck. That's not going to work anymore. So what we're going to have to do is, what, what I'm going to do is grab some more iron. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make another hopper. We're going to make another hopper, and we're going to stick it uh, underneath the other chest right here. Uh, yeah, we're going to put a hopper here, and then it's going to pull stuff from there to there, and then from there to there, and then this is going to be our ores chest. Okay, that's going to work, right. I'm sure we'll find a use for these uh, this buildcraft stuff uh, at some point, but for now, we're going to have to leave it over there. Uh, do we have enough iron at all? No? Okay, <laughs> that's fine. All right, where's our Thermonomicon? While we wait for the iron to cook, uh, what can we do in... Farmcraft, that's cool. There we go. Okay, that was just taking a while to open a page. All right, what we can do is we can start actually doing some research expertise. So this is uh, this is, this makes research a lot easier. So up until now, if I wanted to make a, a new aspect in here, I would have to look at my cheat sheet and figure out which two aspects go together to make the new aspect. Like if I needed more vacuous, like I'd run out of vacuous doing all my stuff, and I want to get some more vacuous, I would need to come over to my cheat sheet and see that Predator plus Air equals vacuous. Do it in here, and things would be go like that. 
Now, if you get far enough down research expertise, what you can do is you can actually just uh, shift click or control click, I think it might be, on the aspect that you want, and it will automatically take the, the, the two aspects used to make it and use them up and make a new one for you. So you don't actually have to know what goes into each aspect, which is pretty cool. And it also allows you to just press shift and it will tell you uh, what aspects other aspects are made up of, which will come in extremely handy when we get onto the research, which is this massive part of the table over here. So let's say we want this thing. We need some scribing tools and paper to get this research. So let's take our scribing tools. Let's grab some paper and let's get some stuff going. So you three, grab you. Do we have what it takes? We do click and we have ourselves some research. Research expertise, research note, uh, knowledge is power. And all we gotta do, I believe, is to throw this in here. So now it says you've run out of ink. We must throw some ink back in there. So we don't have these two aspects, which is kind of a, a, not nice because I wanted to do this. But basically, the way that this works, and this is probably gonna be something else I'm gonna do off camera after this episode. Uh, I'll show you how to do it and then I'll do the rest of them off camera because it's not all that interesting. But basically what happens is, um, you've gotta get from, you've gotta drag and drop. Uh, I'll use something I've got a lot of, like, yeah, uh, Perdita. You've gotta drag and drop aspects into here like this and this one was wrong. So I've got a drag and drop aspect and I've got to make my way from here to here uh, in a foul straight, in a straight line. And that's kind of a bad example. Let me find something that actually makes up orders of primal aspects. So we can use potentia. Basically, if I throw potentia down, it should connect up. There we go, you can see the line that connects it up. Um, the line appears when you put an aspect next to it that either makes up this aspect or is used by this aspect. So in this case, um, what is it now? Potentia? In this case, Potentia is used to make... Is you, it, ugh, I can't speak. It's hard to explain. Uh, potentia is made by using uh, the order, I think it is. Is it order? Yeah. Potentia is used by making order. But then it also works the other way around. So if I put some order here, this connects up here because order is a product. Is a... a not a product. Order is used to make Potentia. So that's how it works. So here, if we had like... I don't know if this was Ignis, we would have to find some aspects that connected together. Uh, to get from Ignis to Order. We have to find like a, a little chain tree. Uh, I'll go over this more next episode. I'll try and figure out which two of these aspects we need and I'll try and unlock a bunch of more aspects. I'll finish this one off just to show you what I mean because I feel like I explained that really badly there and no one's probably going to get what I mean. But uh, that's... I hope that made a little bit of sense. Anyway, let's finish up here. Let's make ourselves uh, a hopper like this. And we should just be able to put you there. By the way, if you shift right click on something it will connect up to this uh, and now that should pull all the items down that we want smelting hold them in there and then put them into the furnace as soon as they're ready let's organize this and throw you in there as well because some sand's always nice to have so that is going to continue to do its thing that is going to auto smelt some stuff and that's a nice little vanilla way actually of auto smelting yours if you uh, if you don't have any mods installed and you just happen to be watching this video uh, that's a nice little vanilla way of uh, even of auto smelting some uh, some ores um so i think that that is about all I can really show you without actually just like running around and and discovering a bunch more aspects. There there is some cool stuff. I do want to get onto some one focus it's pretty early because there are some pretty cool ones that can help us out. And the arcane ball it doesn't look to be that hard to get actually. I looked into it. Doesn't look like it's going to be that hard to craft. So I'm hoping we can actually get that thing going uh, and up and running as our main source of stuff. I don't want to default back to the quarry like I always do. Uh, I want to try some new stuff. So what I'm going to do is guys between this episode and next, I am going to run around. I'm going to scan a bunch of stuff with my scan. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to put a bunch of stuff together in my research table like, uh, I don't know, air and water we've done. Let's say I did, I don't know, the heart and the aqua should get us limus. There we go, Limus. I'm going to sit here and do a bunch of that stuff. Did that happen to be what we needed? No, it didn't. <laughs> that would have been too nice, wouldn't it? So I'm going to sit here and do a bunch of that stuff. And then next episode, we can get on to doing some really cool stuff like some one foci. And we're probably going to have to get into um, some alchemy and infusion crafting pretty soon as well. Actually, what do we need for Nitor? You need scribing tools and paper. Let's see. Do we have what it takes for Nitor? If we take scribing tools and paper, Nitor, do we have what it takes to make that? Oh, we do. Nice. Okay, so you've run out of ink. Uh, that's Fine, we can throw that in there. Okay, so this is a good example. So we've got to get from Lux all the way up to Ignis. Now, Lux is made up of air and Ignis, so this makes this one really easy. So we can just put air uh, to make that, and then this here, we can do Ignis. Uh, no, we can't. We can do like Lux again there, and then we can connect those up with Ignis or air. So the way this worked is because uh, air was used to make up uh, Lux, we could put it there. Because... Um, Air is used to make up looks, it can put it there, because Ignis is used to make up looks, we can put it there. Uh, so basically, if something's used to make it, or if it's, um, 
made by it, then you can put them next to each other. And then you've got to connect them up. And then once you're done, you get a nice little research note that's finished. You can just right click on it and boom, you get NITAR complete. So now if you look in our Thermonomicon, we will be able to click on NITAR and it will tell us that if we throw some glowstone into a crucible, uh, we get ourselves with, we have to throw glowstone in a crucible with Ignis, Lux and Potentia and we'll get ourselves uh, some NITAR. So actually we could probably do that. I mean, a crucible uh, is not too hard to make. It's just a cauldron uh, smacked by a wand. And I think a cauldron is just something like this. That's a cauldron. Grab that, grab our wand, throw it down like here, smack it, thing, and it becomes a crucible. Now you do have to have a heat source underneath it. I'm not sure if you have to have lava or if you can put anything down there. I'm gonna try putting a torch under there. Now I know this will be really slow, if it, even if it does work. And uh, I'm gonna try putting a torch down there because we haven't, s actually no, we've seen lava, haven't we? Okay guys, this episode's not ending yet. We're doing some more stuff. I'm gonna grab a bucket. Actually, do we already have a bucket? Mm, I thought we did, but apparently not. Let's grab, uh, let's make a bucket. Let's grab some lava from down in the mine. And then what we can do is we have some glowstone, I believe, from last episode. Because we found that weird pillar that uh, that had some glowstone on it. So let's head down here. Uh, I should really eat. I th Oh, this is quite a drop. I think I'll make it. Yep, I'm fine. Okay, uh, where's the continuation? It's over here. Right, let's... Oh, God. Um... Let's let's go to my. I, I made a waypoint down deep in the mine. Let's. This is where I was strip mining uh, since last episode. I'm gonna head back this way and try and find some lava from here because I don't really want to uh, encounter that creeper. He didn't look nice at all. Uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna start losing health real quick, actually, which is not nice. Uh, come on, lava. Ooh, there's an ore node here. That's gonna be useful. Actually, what we can do is we can scan this ore node. And it'll give us a bunch of aspects, which is nice. And we're also going to need that later on. Actually, we could probably use it now. And what you can do is you can charge up your wand using this. Because when you want to cast spells or when you want to craft with your wand, you need to be able to... Um you need to have aspects in your wand, and the way you do it is you pull them from aura nodes. So this one, it's really hard to tell because of these shaders, which I'm actually going to turn off real quick. Um, but it has... Uh, 6 Aqua, 18 Order, and 6 Terra. Now, you can continue to pull this, but you want to make sure you don't pull all of them, because if you pull all of it, like if I continue to pull here, I could pull all of the Aqua and all of the Terra out of this Aura Node, and then there would be no more Aqua and Terra in this Aura Node. But if I leave it at 4 and come back like next episode or in 10 episodes time, uh, I can come back and there will be still some... Um, uh, there will still be uh, some stuff in there. It'll actually regen. So we'll come back and there might be like 30, 30 uh, like aqua in there again. So that's kind of how you want to leave things. And hopefully this is the right way back up. I think I can see some light up there, which is nice. I can hear water. There we go. Oh, I'm dying. I don't want to die. I'm too young. Hopefully this doesn't give me poison. It did. Of course it did. There we go. Uh, that's an earth infused shard. Let's, could we have a pick? Let's take that. Can we, t oh God, I can't see anything. I'm blind. <laughs> Oh, crap. What the heck? What? What? It's bright. What the heck was that? Okay, I got most of our stuff back, but what the heck was that? That was... I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I want my stuff back there. I'm not leaving without my stuff. Do I have a torch? I don't. I wish I had a torch. I'd be able to see things. I have no idea what that was. Um, Did I say up here was the right, the right way? Oh, my God. What the heck? Not again. Forget that. Forget it. I'm done. I'm done. It's the creeper still here. Did we get our bucket back? We didn't even get our bucket back. It's the... <sighs> this, mo this pack. This pack has some very awful mobs in it. I think I had a ton of iron on me, didn't I? I had like a ton of iron on me just then. I'm going to go back down. I'm going to have to go back, aren't I? Oh. There we go. Here's, here's my stuff. Okay. There we go. Lava. I could see lava. Let's go get some. Flipping heck. That was... That was quite something. There's obsidian here as well. That's quite nice. Okay. I've got some lava. Let's try not to die. And let's head back home. <laughs> home sweet home. Right. Flipping heck. Whew. Okay. So what we can do is we can throw lava under here. And then we're going to have to go grab a bucket of water as well. And then what we can do is we can start cooking stuff in the crucible. So the way that this works is you have to have something underneath it to heat it up. I'm not sure if torches do work. I'm sure somebody in the comment section will tell me if it does. Um, but I know for a fact lava does. And then you need to put water in there. And then after you've got some water in there and some lava underneath, you can start crafting up some pretty cool stuff. So let's head over here. Let's grab some water. Thank you. Let's head on back home. And let's throw the water into the crucible like that. There we go. So this thing's in there. It'll start bubbling up any second now. Let's grab our glowstone. 
And what did it say we needed? We needed some... Uh, some Ignis, some Lux, and some Potentius. We needed three of each of those. Now, if we look at a Torch, for instance, we can see that it has one Lux in there. So that's got one Lux. Now we need to find something, and that's so, so we could throw three Torches in there, and that'll get us three Lux. Now, if we look at Coal, I believe, uh, let's grab some Coal. You can see it has uh, two Potentia and two Ignis. So we could throw two Coal in there, and that would give us... Uh, actually, let's throw, let's say we throw three in there. Let's throw all three in there, and that would give us six of each of those. And then if we also threw in, uh, say, six Torches, we would then have uh, six of each of those, and we should be able to get ourselves, I believe, two Nighter? Yeah. So let's say we throw in three Coal, and we're going to grab some more Coal from here. Well, yeah, that's fine. And let's see what happens. We'll grab two more of those, two of those... Didn't need all that many, but that's fine. We only need six. So we'll throw all three of this and six of these into here. You can see it's bubbling. So if we throw all three coal in and six torches and a glowstone, ding, we got ourselves a nitro. Now, if we want, to, we should do that again. Uh, with Q and ding, we got another nitro. Nice. So you can see now it's gone back to normal looking water and that is because we've used up all the aspects that are in there and it's a lot better if you do use up all the aspects. For instance, if I'd have thrown in two coal and then uh, if I'd have thrown in like one coal and then, uh, sorry, two coal and then three torches, that would have given me enough to make some nitar, but then there would have still been some aspects left in there. And then if I'd have broke the cauldron, we would have got what's called flux that sort of just like floated about and flux is not nice. It's not good to have. Uh, the cool thing is that nitar actually lights up. It's a little light source. And the really cool thing is that you can use nitar instead of lava uh, down here. So what I can do now is I can put my nitar under there. I can replace this and we got a free bucket of lava, which we can do whatever we want with. And we don't have to worry about the lava burning things down or breaking stuff and all that good stuff. So that's quite nice. We can also take the Nitor back whenever we want and just tuck it in a chest. So that is how uh, Nitor works. That's how the Crucible works. That's how research and all that good stuff works. I think we've done quite a lot for this episode, guys. We still have the flying creepers about. I think they're called angel creepers now. Um, and things are looking good. We're still in this little shack, which is not the best in the world, but it's, uh, it's nice enough. So if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, guys. You are the best and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.